9.30 p.m. This is the regular meeting of the Taos County Board of Commissioners. We thank everyone for being here today. I hereby call this meeting to order. And ask clerk call the roll. Chairman Fenwick. Present. Commissioner Becky Mark. Present. Commissioner O'Donnell. Present. If everyone would please stand and remain standing for the next item. Uh, I ask Commissioner O'Donnell to introduce her guest okay. for our inspirational devotion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today we have Maria Michaelis. She is president of the Earth Journey Retreat Center uh, near El Rito, uh, Northwest. Thank you all. Thank you, Candace, for inviting me. Uh, the Earth Journey Retreat Center has been uh, a nonprofit since 1983. And we've been very quiet, very, uh, very introspective uh, retreat center. But uh, I'm grateful to have this opportunity to, uh, to give the invocation. As we gather together here in this room, we acknowledge our brothers and sisters here. And at the most basic level, we can't help but unite through our breath. We breathe the same air in the same Taos breath. And at the same time, through that breath, we can bring our hearts and minds together in peace and respect for each other. We call on our God that exists purely, beyond names, beyond race or gender, to illumine our minds and bring the Holy Spirit of love and compassion into our hearts. The unity in our humanity here in this room goes out to the entire Taos County as we wish that respect, fairness, spirit of community and compassion for all Taosenos. As our aspiration for the Taos community unites us now, let the spirit of it move out from our hearts to bless the greater world that we're a part of and attract others to come and be blessed by our beautiful land and our unique blend of peoples and cultures. We aspire to make it so. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please remain standing and share the word as usual. Would you please lead us in one, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next item on the agenda, commissioners, is approval of the agenda. Um, I would ask that item 10C be moved with 10A. And I also will ask that um, item 11A be tabled to a specific time when all five commissioners would be present. Mr. Chairman, before we start off, I will, uh, for discussion's sake, uh, go ahead and uh, agree with your motion for the amend those amendments. CNA. CNA, and also. Uh, the lobbyist, uh, but I do have discussion on the lobbyist uh, postponement. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I wonder if we should change that amendment to the next meeting. Uh, is, it, is it time sensitive at all? I mean, you know, well, if it is, we could do a special meeting. I just would think we should all fly be Right. Uh, I just don't know if all five would be here next time. Um, but, uh, okay, we, um, could, we could always do a special meeting, I guess, if, if we could well, get five. Mr. Chairman, I just want to say there's a recommendation then made uh, to delay it. It's not wise, because we've got to get moving on it. Um, they could call in. Uh, and again, we have no guarantee that they're all going to be here when we set a new uh, time. And I do believe the postponement has to um, name a specific time. That's 
why I said that. And we have not set a specific time for our next meeting in December. No, it would be, a, I recommend a special meeting um, either next week. Um, Mr. Chair, as soon as possible. We, we can't uh, do that. Uh, we would have to vote on a special meeting before we would make that recommendation. We have not done that. No. So if we then it would, Mr. Manager, when's our next meeting set for? Um, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, we are scheduled to have a joint meeting with the Town and House next Thursday, the 15th. If there was a need for a special meeting, perhaps we could either do it right before or right after to take care of any business that we need. There may be a couple other um, action items that we need approvals on anyway. Uh, there's an RFP that we need to award for the accident and then a couple other things that may need to be done. So that would be the next time we're all supposed to be together. But wouldn't we have to notice that before we say we're going to have a special meeting on the 15th? Commissioner, 72 hours. For a special meeting, it says 72 hours. But do we have the authority right now to set a special meeting so we can make that part of the motion? Have any, any time as long as you do it 72 hours before the meeting. Well, I'm just saying that on um, the particular item regarding the lobbyists, that there are here who can vote on the recommendation. I don't see there being any change on the staff recommendation um, that if we postpone it, um, we have not yet set a meeting time for it. So that's where I'm wondering uh, if that's appropriate. I would encourage us to make this vote today. So get on with it. Uh, I'll support the motion um, as long as we have uh, the option of, of addressing it on the 15th. Or even, I suppose, the first meeting in December wouldn't be too late. Uh, obviously, we can't put it off too much longer. And, and the intent of the motion is the next time we have five together, we'll do it. But well, we don't set our uh, priorities until December anyway. So okay. Okay. So it's um, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask you then that we vote on these uh, changes to the agenda separately. Because okay. I don't think it's right that we postpone well, the motion. The was the motion was to vote on them together, so. Well, I, and I'm gonna withdraw uh, approval of the agenda because I wanna vote on uh, postponement as a separate issue. I don't think it's right. We're all here, they can call in. The recommendations have been made. Nothing's gonna change uh, if the other two are here. I just want all five to be here. That's all. I, I don't, I'm not saying well, we'll change it. I don't want it. I don't have want no to touch guarantee it. that everybody's going to be here. here. Yeah, it, it's, it's worth the it's worth the wait for me. Um, did you make a motion? I'll make a motion now that we approve the agenda with C being combined with A under item 10 and that item 11 A B um, postponed um, to a later specific time, which would possibly be the for a special meeting on the 15th, which can be noticed on Monday. Okay, I'll second that motion. And I'm going to ask that you keep uh, that we vote on the lobbyist as a separate motion, so I can vote no. So I'm not voting no on the entire agenda. That's appropriate. So I would ask that you vote on approval of the agenda with the changes from uh, B as C moved up. After A, and then let me vote no on uh, your postponement because we do not have a definite time. We don't know if everybody's going to be here once again. Well, we gave them an opportunity. So we gave them an opportunity, and the 15th is when it will be decided. That's Whether we're all five here or not, we gave them an opportunity. That's fine, Mr. Chairman. I just want to be able to vote my right to vote no on that postponement, but not vote no against approval of Your comments are duly noted, Commissioner. 
And so I think that would be sufficient. Everyone knows you, you're not okay for moving into the special meeting on the 15th. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner O'Donnell. I don't know how to vote. I'm voting yes on approval of the agenda. Uh, moving C to B no. regarding C the planning, but I am voting no on postponement of the uh, lobbyist vote. Commissioner Blankenhart? Yes. Chairman Pepper? Yes. Okay, next item on the agenda is citizens' concerns. Any citizen wishing to address the uh, commission? We ask that you come forward, state your name uh, at the beginning of your presentation, and keep your comments to five minutes or less. And uh, we'd like to hear from anybody at this time. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, county manager and everybody. My name is Detention Officer Nathaniel Samuel. Uh, I'm alongside my warden, Paul Maestas. Uh, I have a letter written from Pretty much all the EMS dispatch, where well, I'm representing all the first responders, including detention, uh, to talk about the holiday closures. So I would like to read that this time. Okay. Uh, to the Towns County Commission, as employees of the Vital Operations Department within the county, we would like to bring to your attention a disparity provided in the current collective bargaining agreement between employees scheduled to work normal office hours and employees that participate in vital operational operation roles. <clears throat> in Article 9 holidays, there are three dates that are indicated as non-holiday closures and therefore not subject to holiday pay as defined in Article 12, Section C of the collective bargaining agreement. As employees of the vital operations departments, we do not feel that this is a fair practice, and as such, it, it undervalues our roles as county employees. All county closures that are scheduled and defined in the collective bargaining agreement or county policy should be shared by all county employees. The county employees that are encompassed in vital operations and, and unable to have those days off should be compensated the same as, the same as others as all other state holidays. We understand that this is agreed upon by both the union and Tufts County. However, we feel that this agreement did not address the employees that fill vital roles as appropriately as it should have. We are asking that the commission rectify this disparity and provide that all scheduled closures be paid to all employees. Um, I do have signatures from employees, uh, mostly in my department, our department, but we feel that this should be looked upon because I don't think it's fair that first responders should be taken away from that holiday closure while other county employees are off and paid and we have to be here and deal with the people and, and help the people, the public that we do serve and we do not get compensated for it. Thank you, very good presentation to Thank you. Um, go ahead and give us that and, and we'll have the manager set something up and see if we can get this resolved. Oh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just make a quick comment. Um, the board had already directed myself as manager to do to work with the union to rectify that prior to this next two non-holiday closures that are coming up, which I believe are Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. So um, our goal is to definitely address that prior to that. And I thank you guys. I appreciate you coming forward. Um, we know it's a disparity, it's a discrepancy in our in our agreement, and it doesn't. So I thank you guys for all you do, and I, I have to agree that um, I want to sell you guys short on what you're providing to the county. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll continue on. Thank you for your comments, and as, again, very good presentation. Thank you. Item 7 is uh, minutes approval of the October 23rd, 2018 regular meeting minutes. Commissioners? I wasn't here, Commissioner, so I'm going to have to, Chairman, I'm going to have to abstain. Well, actually, just for the purpose of uh, approving minutes, um, it's just a vote that you're approving what was presented. So you were entitled, even though you didn't attend the meeting. Okay. We got a ruling on that. Okay. In that case, I'll make a motion to approve. And I'll second. Uh, for the 
Commissioner Obama. Yes, Commissioner Pepper. Yes, Chairman Pepper. Yes. Item 8 under presentations is item 8 of presentation regarding the new Towson County website. Uh, this will be presented by Mr. Medina and Carlos Valdez of our, uh, and Seth Gutierrez, our IT uh, group. And uh, this hopefully will be exciting. Good morning. I'm how are you? Good, good, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, yeah, I'm just going to talk a little today about our new website, which goes live on Monday morning, the 12th of November. And um, I put together a little presentation for you guys. Let's so get this going. You already got us. You got us at that point. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So I have this evening. Might not be able to judge a book by its cover, but you can judge an organization by its website. So we had a um, our existing website has served its purpose. It's run its course and um, it's time to upgrade. We, a lot of new things have come out in the last few years, um, technologies for the internet. And so we wanted to kind of get in on some of that. Um, Plus, that's the name of the company that um, built the site for us. They've been in business over 20 years. They have a team of over 200 employees who um, consist of graphic designers, web developers, coders, and consultants, salespeople, who all contributed to the process. There are over 2,500 government websites to their credit, and they basically become a gold standard for local government websites. Um, the project kicked off on April 13th and it took us seven months to complete, and it was five phases, and those were the website optimization, which entailed optimizing our current website so that they could transfer the information over. Then we did design presentation, which was contribution of photos and um, colors and all that other stuff. Then we had production and site development, which was Civic Plus building the website, and then they sent it back to us and tell them whether we liked it or not, send it back to them. Um, website review and training, which we completed last week, and then we are at Go Live now, which will take place. It was supposed to happen this morning, but we put it off for the weekend because there's some things we need to kind of make adjustments before we go live. So Monday morning, when you um, go to TowsCounty.org, it will take you to the new site. And then some of the uh, features that we have with the new site. This is a 100% ADA compliant site. Um, it's also about permissions based with the intu intuitive drag and drop content management system, which makes it easy for each of us um, here or each department to manage their own content. It integrates with the regroup emergency notification systems recently introduced by the Office of Emergency Management. And it decentralizes the administration of the site, which is going to save the MIS department tons of time, but right now we have one guy, uh, Dave Travis, he's doing all of this stuff for us, and I don't know how he does it, but um, this will allow the departments to manage their own content. They can post what they want, take down what they want, we won't have to go through us in the waiting. Um, let's see. There's also some other features which include content versioning, so if somebody makes a mistake, they can go back to the previous version. Uh, bad link citing, which if there's a dead link, it'll give us, it'll actually give us a list of all the links that go nowhere so we can take them down right away. Um, alt tabs for the ADA compliance screen readers. Um, content scheduling, you can put something up today, tell it to display on a certain day and automatically come down on a certain day so it won't be leaving up any stale information. And it's all browser based so we don't need any special software. And it's easy to use. Um, we have our County staff is going to actually be doing it, so it's kind of like using a word processor or anything like that. It's uh, we also have 24 7 365 days a year support from Civic Plus in case anything goes wrong. And after four years, we get a complete redesign at no charge. <coughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and let Carlos and Seth come up and talk about the features of the site. Yeah. Um, so I'm just here to go a quick 
overview of the features and functions, but the functionality on the website, um, the links to the Excel Agenda Center will still be on there. Um, that way we can still access the agendas. Um, the public can still see up from there, print on everything from there. Carlos, is that our agendas and planning and zoning? Um, no, just your guys' agendas. The planning and zoning will be on their page unless we start. So it's there. So Mr. Manning's remarks at last meeting would be pretty much unfound. Yeah, yeah. We'll actually have it. It'll be on the event calendar with a link to the agenda. Thank you. Um, the alert center, that's on. If there's any breaking news in the county that we need to put up, it'll put a banner across the screen. So it's going to help out with the public when they go to the website. There's a prescribed burn, that's what we've been putting on the website. There's smoke in the county. We've been adding that to it, so that'll be on there. Um, archive center, that'll be on access, videos, and old agendas and stuff from the archive center. Um, the bid postings, that'll help with the purchasing department, and they will be able to um, mm -hmm. put it up there. And just um, people that get into the bid will have to log in, and that's the only way they can get the packet. So this gives us a record of who's actually went in and looked at it and got everything. So. One of the other things is the events calendar. Every department will have its own event calendar, so they can put on their their own events and stuff that's going on in their department. Citizen request tracker. We're working on that right now because. Um, we don't have permission, but it's supposed to let the citizens send requests to us and we can actually keep track of what's being done and everything. So that's for the public, that's really good. Um, facilities and reservations, we got to, we need to speak with facilities and see about res setting up that for them to reserve buildings throughout the county, county buildings. Forum center is just, forum center, you fill forms that we can create on the website that can be filled out electronically instead of having them uploaded and then downloading, printing, filling them out, just electronically let them fill them out and submit them back to us. Uh, job postings that will be taken care of by HR. Um, they'll be able to post their own jobs instead of sending them up to us and us getting them posted for them. That'll save us time and actually save might save them time to make sure they're posted and go back to the website. The notify me is we will have 500 SMM, SMS subscribers. Um, they can sign up and they can get notified by the county. Um, it sends out mass emails to them and any kind of alerts or anything they'll be able to receive that we post on the web. The news flash, that's pretty much the alert center. It'll, same thing, it'll pop news up the same way as the alert center. Staff directory is um, actually going to be taken by each department. So as people leave and hire new people, they will be able to update it. Um, I know on the website we're having issues with that. And, uh, this will be a lot easier. The departments know what's happening in their own departments. The social networking, we did not have that on our current website. So now we will have links to our county Facebook page that is managed. So the public can actually communicate with us through the website also instead of just going to Facebook. And we will be getting employee internet, right? Yes. For the internal, internal, so our employees will be able to access the internet now. And things like that will be available on, on the website. Um, it'll be, they'll have to log in, so it'll just be available to internal. <coughs> um, also, the multi-level mega menus may be uh, navigating Side really easy. You can just go to one menu and you can much just get a big menu that shows everything you're looking for. So you can find out one place you have to go here and follow a bunch of links to get this um, Active Directory Federated Services it allows us to integrate with our existing network infrastructure so that way we can um, set permissions based on that. We don't have to have two separate places for permissions, and they can also support single sign in or single sign-on login, so they'll only have to enter the password once, they don't have to have two passwords, and that's in the process of being set up now. Um, let's see what else we have here. So that's what set up. We've got the regroup integration I mentioned, and the My Dashboard, um, citizens can sign up and they can customize their dashboard when they log in, they can have you know, certain things, RSS feeds or whatever pop up, and, um, 
It also like that works alongside the alert center and notify me so that if there's ever anything that the county wants to like uh, information to disseminate, they can send that out to the public who signed up for it. The difference between that and notifying me and the regroup is the regroup includes the iPods, which is the emergency alert that comes out on your iPhone when there's an outer alert, and that one you don't have to sign up for, that goes to everybody who has that feature on their phone. Whereas the other two that we're setting up, they have to sign up for. So that's the difference there. And here's our old home page. And the new home page. And the next one is our old government page. what they would be looking at, I guess. 
So right now we don't have that. It just read whatever text is on the page, which is a close second, but I mean, there's certain things that they require in order to be, I can't remember what the law is, section like something, um, ADA compliant, federal. So this just takes care of that. And then um, how far back will you be archiving the meetings? We'll be archiving that. I think she's, we can go as far as we want, pretty much. So I mean, what do you guys have in mind? I guess that's the question for you. Do you guys have a certain time period? Or as long as far back as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep them all there. That's what I was kind of thinking. Just since the beginning of my term. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I believe it's just, it just keeps on rolling and until we fill up our 25 gigabytes of space that we have available for stuff like that and then... Just buy more space. Buy more space, yeah. Um, the interactive public comments I like, and will that be on a particular department or all departments? Yeah, we're actually, we we're starting to set that up this morning and I believe Carl said that how that works yeah. is there's different types of um, reports that they can um, send it to us, like for potholes or for different things. Each of those types of reports can go to its own unique mailbox, so we can make one for like for the potholes of the public works and for this problem with the website that would go to us. Um, so that's why the commissioner guy has a one also. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can also make one for commissioners and you guys can... But he's requested that the citizens be able to report something yeah. on numerous times, so... Yeah, this will be nice. Nice. They don't Thank bombard you. us too hard with that. Great <laughs> website. The pop was in this town. And then the login. Uh, public will just have to create their password, they log in to get to the packets. Are you, is no, that no, it's just uh, if they want to customize their dashboard. So if they want to save settings on the site, <clears throat> like their RSS feeds, news feeds, things like that, there's certain things that they can customize. And to do that, they create a, a login, basically. A profile. The same for the the public wants to get the pack agenda. They, they don't. They don't have to. They don't have Yeah, to. they don't even have to create profile if they don't want to. It's just an optional feature. I see. I mean, they could. Anybody who wanted to could just go to the site like regular user, and they could do it just the same also. So after so this week's up and running, uh, maybe the county manager could send a letter to Fog and say, "Hey, take a look at our new website and." Uh, let's get a, you know, see if... I was actually looking at their uh, store they rated us last time. They haven't done that in years, but so I thought they, they had some time yeah, to... A new director. Uh, but I think we should alert them. It's something to be proud of. Write the letter to sign it. Write the letter to Fog and tell them to look at our website. When are they going to do an assessment again of all the 33 county websites? I want... I think we'll be way up there. Yeah, we have all started on that soon too before. Do you uh, have any idea currently how many people actually go to our county web? Do you have oh, a count? Last check, there's about, what was it? There was a county on the website and it was 7,000. I can't remember if that was for the week or for the month. It was the latest statistic. I can get that information for you, but it's all available. <laughs> current slide, if you go to MIS department, under site statistics. And then the gallery, the photo gallery, how does that work? <clears throat> photo gallery is basically, um, you know how we currently have the pictures of historic Taos County on our website? Well, that's what we populated that with now, but the photo gallery includes that, and any photos that are seen throughout the site, they can be used as just an image without any of the text or anything else in front of it. So. That doesn't mean that uh, this Anissa is going to upload all the Halloween pictures of five years ago. I mean, well, that's, that's what we use for too. We have a special events or occasions or anything like that. We can always you know, take pictures and share them on. Because we take a lot of pictures of awards, presentations. Yeah, that would that, be perfect for that. That have not been put up anywhere because we didn't have a site. So now we can start putting up all those pictures. Great, thank you so much. Well, the total cost, total cost, it came out, it was $56,000 up front for the redesign and for the, for just what they're doing now. It's going to be $8,000 a year to maintain going forward, and it's actually a pretty good deal. Yeah, that's, that's what they bad. do. And, but it is one of the more expensive um, site developers, but like I say, they're the gold standard now, pretty much. 
they've been at it for a really long time, so they know what they're doing. I think it's worth it. Burn permits? Burn permits, we can put online, as uh, Carlson mentioned, with the form center. That's one of the things we can do is we can make the form available online. We'll still have to figure out how to get signatures on there, um, but that's something I'll work with going online. And I think we already have a solution. We just have to kind of test it out and see what's going to work. So that's one of the biggest complaints you're traveling all the way from. It still looks like or total good. visitors to our site, and I'm not sure how long this goes back, but it's 389,611. This month it was 9,097. This week, 5,220. And yesterday alone it was 1,010. Today we've had 369 visitors so far. Wow. Um, are you going to advertise the task news? Um, yeah, I'm planning on uh, doing the press release on Monday and having uh, before you put it out, we will put it out on Thursday's paper. Hopefully, you can do that for us. And so, excuse me, one more question, Mr. All Chair. Right. On a scale of 1 to 10, right. how much does this take stress away from IT? This will be a pretty high up there, about an 8. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those things that just, you know, it's a time killer for us, so this will really be helpful. All right, thank you. Thank you, guys. And you guys set the Carlos, thanks a lot. Thank you. We'll send you guys a link so you guys can ask the site so we can open it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Did you want to, we kind of pass it as them being one item uh, in the adjustment. So I'll read item C as well. Mr. Chairman, that is correct. And to include request to schedule a public hearing for an appeal of a decision by the Planning Commission at the regular schedule in September 12, 2018 meeting to approve special use permit SUP-04-2018, sorry. Yeah, used to those finance numbers. The special use permit is for a commercial use to build an 8,400 square foot commercial building to operate a family dollar store located at 1,800% of Pueblo Sloop in Rancho Sintel. Uh, Mr. Hill. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, Mr. Austin, Mr. Corbo. Today I respect to come before you to request the date of December 10th. 2018 as the date to hear the appeal of the decision of the Planning Commission regarding Steve Martin Hill, doing business as protege and protege excavation, and the appeal of the decision of the Planning Commission regarding special use permit 004 2018, which was submitted by the Brazos Neighborhood Association. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, this will require two separate public hearings. I come to you with a specific date of December 10, 2018, in order to meet notification requirements. I merely ask for your approval today and for you to set a time, which I would respect you recommend as being 9 o'clock in the morning. I suspect that the appeal for Mr. Stephen Hill would take approximately two hours, and I suspect that the appeal for the Pell would take approximately three hours. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, with your uh, uh, approval of scheduling for December 10, 2018, that would allow staff to work with the appellants to get a legal advertisement into the newspaper today for publication in next Thursday's edition of the CAS News and will also meet the notification requirements by means of letter of notification and postings in the property. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we set that date with uh, site visits to each of the sites. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, I, the site visits are doable, uh, they're possible. They're legal, uh, but they're, they have to be done with particular care because what may happen is, is you could be introducing matters that are not included in, in the hearing. So it has to be done as a noticed hearing. All commissioners have to go at the same time and parties can attend as well. And then it is important that when it is convened in the hearing that the commissioners not uh, bring in evidence that they witnessed at the scene. So if it's the commission's will to do site business, it is legal, but it just needs to be done. I, yeah, I, go ahead. Well, yeah, I, I don't want to commit to a site visit at this time. Uh, let's see what happens. I'm happy with the December 10th date. At nine. Um, yeah. have to notice if we're going to do a site visit. I'm not, I don't know these areas. So, I mean, we have to notice. Mr. It. Chair, the, <coughs> if you start the hearing and it becomes uh, clear that there's a site visit necessary, you can continue the hearing to do a site visit and then return to the hearing. Uh, if you wish. I mean, it's not as convenient as setting it, but I agree. Site visits, uh, the record, as you'll see in these, are complete with photographs and, and uh, site maps and descriptions, so it may be once you do it, the site visit would be less necessary. Okay. Um, is that acceptable, Commissioner Adam? Then I just need to change my motion to approve the day uh, with a potential for a site visit. Beginning at 9 and to conclude the both here. Yes. Make sure you have the time. Yes, uh, meeting at 9 mm -hmm. to the yeah. conclusion. Okay. Second. Is that a motion a second to schedule the appeals listed in item A and Sub A of the uh, Stephen R. Hill doing business as Proje Excavation and the Dollar Store proposed 8,400 square foot commercial building at 1800 Pacific Pueblo Sur will begin at 9 a.m. on the 
the 10th is the motion I heard, with possible site visits to each location. Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Obama? Yes. Commissioner Beckingham? Yes. Chairman Crum? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. I just want to add that it is funding one day. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Commissioners, the motion to uh, postpone item 10B, the investment committee meeting report, to uh, unspecified later. So moved. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner O'Donnell? Yes. Commissioner Leggenhardt? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Item 12 is county managers reporting matters. Uh, A is letter of intent to explore feasibility of solar array of 20 acres of County owned property. Item B is a uh, meeting with vendors of historic county courthouse. Item C is schedule of uh, Board of County Commissioners retreat for December 13, 14, 2018. Item D is a list of attendees for the BIPO conference. Item D is a list of attendees for the ANC legislative conference. And item F is update uh, the commission of various items affecting the house. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, the first item, I uh, just dropped a letter, I put it up at each of your faces, it's a letter basically asking, um, for letting Kit Carson Co-op know that uh, we have intentions to um, consider negotiations for a land lease of up to 15 acres for the installation of a, up to 2 megawatt solar voltaic facility to, uh, in, to include storage. Um, with the location of the property being off of our county road, uh, C110, um, in close proximity to the um, proposed veteran cemetery site. Uh, the point of the letter is basically just to start the whole process and to allow Kit Carson to then begin to explore the feasibility of that particular site and then um, to get with the investors that would potentially be building that and we could then go to the next step of negotiating if, if it is feasible to do it at that site. So after some meetings with Mr. Reyes, this was um, step one, was to us, for us to submit this letter. Um, I did sign the letter, I just wanted the board to be aware that I would be presenting this to Kit Carson to take that first step in exploring the feasibility of that solar sort of If I can, um, he, in the presentation at the, the infrastructure conference, uh, he talked about the, uh, the partnership, possible partnership House County on this and the benefits and they actually received an award on becoming the first rural co-op that could be completely off the grid by 2020 and it was pretty exciting to be a part of that so I think we should do anything we can to help this project go forward. So Mr. Chairman, we are 40 acres out there, is that right? Okay. Yes. This and it's approximately seven acres per one megawatt. And so um, we're not committing to a two megawatt either, um, but considering the size of the property we have, we might as well explore the feasibility of the potential of a two megawatt, which then would come. We would uh, take about 15 acres with setbacks and everything else that we require in fairly large. Then would the Veterans Cemetery then be totally solar powered? I mean, if it requires lights? Um, that's why the storage capacity was introduced. So uh, Mr. Reyes mentioned that um, if we had storage, that would be easier for us to obtain. And the storage would also provide more value to them um, to capture that solar energy at the peak and then reuse it uh, when they need it most. So yes, we would have a high likelihood of being able to use our solar power for the cemetery. So. And another uh, initiative in that's Kit Carson has been um, working on and that they are including the county on is EV charging systems. Um, there are grant monies out there potentially for local governments to uh, request money to install um, electric vehicle charging systems. So obviously our location here in town and our, our parking lot would be a good uh, opportunity, um, especially if everything is covered by a grant. Uh, there, so that is something else that I am continuing to discuss with Kit Carson 
to look at, and then they do want to look at the rest of our properties throughout the county and see if there's anywhere else that might be a, a suitable location for a, a charging station. This is real important, I think, because the presentation I also heard on this, I think, is You know, there's going to come a day real soon that if you go on Expedia to look for a hotel or some place you're going to go, it's going to, there's going to be some kind of key that tells people, is it EV um, friendly community? And if not, they're going to bypass those because in the next five years, 40% of the fleet produced by Ford, Chevrolet, and Dharma, Chrysler will be EV. Do these things work for everybody? Like Tesla, Ford? There'll be a, an adapter that will be available, um, or they'll, you know, eventually they'll become universal, like USB ports and things like that. But um, and then there would be a thing where they just swipe their debit card or something like that and it, and it takes care of that because we can't just do it for free. I thought that would be something that we could do for, for promotion, but it's anti-donation, so we can't do that. So um, I think here is good because we've got a bus stop that will take people to the plaza <coughs> and other places like that. And then like Mr. Cordova said, if we can identify some other spots that we have uh, control over, it's just going to make us that much more marketable. This is a direct marketable success <coughs> to continue to keep this program. And there's money from the Volkswagen settlement and some other um, programs out there that it's probably not going to be much expense to tell you all. Thank you, Chairman, for mentioning that the Volkswagen settlement is the funding source for this grant money specifically, so that's why we want to get in early. And, and Our match would be minimal, I think, and I, I'll, I'll go ahead and push for this. Um, as I understood, there's a potential the match could just be us providing the location. Yeah. And that might be all we need to do in terms of providing the match is giving them the location to have. And there's different types of charging stations. The one that we probably want to do here is a very um, quick charge. It's a fast charge and it, it does it quickly and it, and it holds it longer. And then there's cheaper systems that might provide a longer charge that might be suitable for other places around the county. So, um, this is great for tourism. Yeah, you know, we, with the blue bus stop being here, and if they, they improve it over there, you know, it'll get some people on that to go to the Plaza Two sites, to go eat. You know, we don't have a lot of restaurants right close to us other than across the street, so okay. that. Way. To start with one charging, or, or several? I would start with one. I think, um, especially with the quick charge, uh, they think you could fully charge, I think he said, within an hour. 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. Wow. And then if we could just make sure that we're not interfering with the free market of where you place the... Yeah, I think it's going to have to be closer, closer to the in. where the service is, or in the back. Yeah, I don't think we've made those details yet. Um, I'm sure there will probably have to be a, a electric service near it too. So maybe in that area we don't know what to do. But <laughs> okay. Definitely an exciting pros prospect for us to continue to work with Kit Carson on these um, leading initiatives to kind of promote, like you said, tourism. So, uh, at a meeting, Miguel Sanchez said we cannot charge for the electricity, but we can charge for the parking space. Because that's, you, that we cannot charge for them to, we can't charge for the electricity, but we can charge for uh, a parking space because we would see a, a jump in our electric bill with that. So no, we would have to charge for the electricity. Yeah. It's a flat fee, though, that they would be charged. And that's allowed because I know Miguel said it wasn't at that last meeting. You told me. that the presentation? I was there. Okay. I'll look into that for that. I'll have an answer to that. Okay. You know, um, I do agree with the chairman. We got have some kind of consideration of some sort, otherwise it would be not like an issue. Yeah. We'll figure that out as we go along. Um, yes. Is it anticipated that there'll be free ones around eventually? Isn't that going to make our street obsolete? I don't know. Well, right now it's us in the town and they would be under the same restrictions that we are. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Discussion is trying to get them as 
Chair mentioned into hotels, and so I don't know how a hotel would do that. They may tack it onto the charge of the room, mm -hmm. and they may, but if you had charging stations available at hotels, um, that might be a competition or it may not. I mean, I don't know. I think yeah. it's so early on that there's a lot of questions in regards to that. I think we don't have anything, and that does tend to hurt us sometimes. I've heard um, people with electric vehicles have to really plan how to get here and right. back to Saturday. And that's why they're going to be tied to Expedia and those kind of websites that, yeah. that you know, help people do their little lap. Yeah, I'd be worth it to take a lead in that and see how it plays out. Agreed. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, the next item on my list, uh, I did hold a meeting last week with um, the vendors of our historic county courthouse. Um, it was, I felt, a very productive meeting, basically just wanting to update them in regards to our um, success in achieving the CDBG award and letting them know that based on that award we will now be moving forward with um, RFP and trying to find a contractor. So uh, not a whole lot of information um, that we haven't already heard, but they wanted to hear it. And I think it was useful for them to understand um, what our plans are. There was a lot of questions that we don't necessarily have answers to yet that will come with the contractor being on board. Um, but the vendors downstairs, uh, especially smoke, smoke signals who were most affected in the short term, um, were appreciative of hearing that we're working with them and that the board had given me the directive to do as little as possible to displace them. So to try and absorb um, as much of their operations as possible while we do our work. So they were, they felt, I think, good about that and they rested assured knowing we're working with them and we're not going to displace anybody right off the bat. So I felt like it was a good meeting. Uh, there was a lot of attendees as well from Arts and Artifacts and um, the Historical Society and everyone else that, you know, spends time upstairs. So good meeting. They thought it went well and um, we'll continue to have those meetings as we have more information to provide. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, could we get a kind of final copy of the drawings from the architect in case people ask us? Because we don't, we just have... Like a little booklet? Yeah, but could we just get the final... We don't have anything since that last book that you've given you until we get a contractor on board to help work with those final the details that need to be done. We want, we're pretty much as far as we can with the drawings until we have a contractor on board, because I understand it. So what you guys have is what, what we have. When we do the RFP, we get a contractor on board, then they can finalize those details in, in collaboration with the contractor. So, we're almost there. I think it's very positive. Yeah, we'll, we're looking to do that soon. Um, we're formulating that once we can't go ahead of the CDBG award letter. And then we do have to follow the RFP that's within the CDBG guidelines and in their packet. And so it's not much different than ours, a little bit stricter, it's federal money but we do have to use their RFP standards, so. Mr. Chairman, I hope the Cast News had promoted that story on 750,000. Is it possible we could do a little press release or put it on Facebook to announce it? I mean, we really haven't officially announced it anywhere. It'd be nice to promote. I think there was a, I saw a little tiny article on somebody's house. I don't know. Um, yeah, we could certainly do something. I, I, I'd like to have a grand meeting and have to pursue. Um, just make sure that it actually is um, all signed and good to go and we have access to the funds. So maybe when we get that, that would be an appropriate time. All right, the next item I have is um, the schedule for the Board of County Commissioners retreat. Um, I had mentioned a few meetings back about the idea of maybe December 6th. Um, and seven, it turns out that that's the same time as the BIPO conference, which I do hope to attend um, as the manager. Uh, so I'm recommending that we move back one week to December 13th and 14th. So if there's no um, conflict, that will be what we'll shoot for is those two days in December. And most likely it will be here in our chambers. We'll just keep it simple, keep it inexpensive, and um, you'll probably get me as your facilitator. I'd like that's the retreat. Yes, I'm sure. checking right now, I believe, and I have Anissa helping me, but I believe that's what I have multi-line and multi work out 13th and 14th and 7th. So, okay. okay. I will uh, look at the calendar and come back with another proposed date so it's for you guys. Maybe, um, yeah. yeah, I'll look at the calendar. I'll come Sorry back. about that. That's okay. 
um, that's why we're asking the client to make sure that we're working. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll find another couple of days. Sometime in December. Um, so the next item then is the list of attendees for the BIPO. Um, BIPO is better informed public officers uh, or officials. Uh, we have one brand new elector coming in, our, our assessor elect, Ms. Dimas. She's planning to go, and I was going to also attend with her. I think uh, Commissioner Romero may be attending, and uh, it's open to anyone. It's not just the new uh, elected officials, existing elected officials can attend as well. So if there's any interest from the board, please let myself or Renal know, and how we can get you registered for, those, for that date. Um, same thing, we're requesting a list of any attendees that want to attend the NMC Legislative Conference it's in January 14th and 7th through 17th. So, I'll be there for that. I will probably go, but I also want to go to a few edge classes, but I have to look at the schedule. So, okay. Just work with myself and Renel, we'll make sure we get everything um, straightened out for um, those, those dates. Uh, a couple other things that I had, I just wanted to bring, um, last week I had a um, county manager's affiliate retreat up at Towski Valley, uh, I felt like it was, it was good, we didn't get a huge turnout of county managers, but I think we had about 14 that came up, uh, they definitely loved Taos and they were grateful that um, Towski Valley hosted us and they treated us quite well I and mean, they had great facilities. Uh, we were hosted in the Children's Center, which has been completely remodeled, and it was, it was a great time. Um, a good discussion, one of the main things I think that I picked up coming out of it was NMC is looking at potentially providing us different services. And one of the services they put out there, which I think is, is positive for a county our size and much smaller, would be grant writing services. So they're looking at um, either contracting with the grant writing um, group or bringing in their own grant writers un under their umbrella, which we could then, for a fee, utilize. Uh, as part of our discussion, you know, even the big counties don't maximize the use of a grant writer. I think Santa Fe was mentioning that they do have one on site, but they're not always fully busy and, and utilizing that full capacity. So having the ability to hire for a fee on specific grants means that we don't have to bring a full FTE in and, and have that downtime and we're wondering what they're going to do. So um, that was positive. I really appreciated that. We also had big discussions on uh, upcoming legislative priorities of NMC. Um, and then jail. We talk about jails all the time. Every time managers get together, that's one of our major topics. And so once again, we did have a lot of discussion on jails, ways to improve things and improve training just to get better results while we're dealing with our detainees. So good conversations. And then as the chairman had brought to your attention last time, there is discussion about combining the pools. So um, he could always speak better to that, but they brought that up to the manager so that we had an idea of what might be coming down the pipe with common, combining with the workers' comp and the multi-line and the law enforcement pools. Um, it really does come down to trying to get the best bang for the buck, it sounds like, and efficiency is what's needed for them to be able to get that reassurance, insurance. So, insurance. so that was um, a quick rundown of our manager's affiliate last week. Um, we had a THS board meeting a few weeks ago. Uh, the <clears throat> leadership at THS uh, is proposing to hire another firm to help come in with to clean up AR. Uh, this firm is called TrueBridge, I believe, and they are tied specifically to the, the new software that they have brought in. So they're very hopeful that um, the understanding this company has of the software will help them to really become more efficient in their building and coding. Uh, one of the major initiatives of that is to try and keep as many people already employed at Holy Cross employed. So this company essentially would be the director of that building and coding staff, trying to provide them better training and better um, efficiencies. Uh, it is important, it's needed. It was, um, we're still struggling, I think, at the hospital to transfer AR into cash. Uh, they've come a long way, the AR is getting smaller, and more importantly, the current building is better, and we're seeing more revenues coming in and better volumes over there at the hospital, but um, we, don't want to lose money, and we are 
realizing that there have been some billing and coding errors that have cost significant amounts of money for the hospital. So it's a great initiative to try and fix it. I, I definitely am supportive of the idea and I hope it works. So I you guys informed of that progress and I think our next meeting is in December. So. Um, that's about all I have at this time. I stand for any questions if there are any the board. Yes, sir. Just uh, maybe the next meeting update on the challenge status. Okay, we'll look at that. The, the deadline came and went yesterday, and so I don't really have a status update as of yet. We just the, the deadline did come and go. Um, as I understand, the tower's still up. So we'll, we'll deal with that next step. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cook. Thank you. Commissioners, uh, I seek to now bring item 10B prior to item 13. I need a motion. So moved. Don't we postpone it to a later meeting? No, or to a, an unspecified time. Oh, okay. All right, second. Clerk Paul Commissioner Dunn. Yes. Commissioner Blakenhead. Yes. Chairman Dunn. Yes. Okay, item 10B is investment committee meeting report to the Board of Finance to, for fiscal year 2018-19 first quarter meeting. This will be presented by our, our treasurer, Ms. Susan Trujillo. Good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry for uh, the delay. This is a very busy time and I was detained in my office. Um, again, this is our uh, first quarter uh, investment um, committee report. And um, in the um, in the investment committee meeting, <coughs> October 26, 2018, we met at 1:30 in the executive conference room. Those in attendance were myself as a treasurer, Paula Sanchez-Staven as the chief deputy treasurer, and um, Randy Baca as the accountant. Um, came in for Marianne Gonzalez, and uh, he is our new accountant. So we're very happy to have him on board. And um, um, the under court of it, the manager was, was present, Lupe Martinez, the finance director, and um, uh, Commissioner Femmer was um, not in attendance, but he was represented again by the manager. I believe you, um, How was that all That's correct. And uh, you asked that uh, Leandro um, represent you there. And Rose Vargas was um, from the U.S. Bank, and uh, I met with uh, Rose Vargas <coughs> later on, um, and um, she was very pleased and, um, that uh, she had been invited to be a part of our investment committee meeting. That um, she's learned a lot, and and she's enjoying the reporting. And and again, it it, it uh, broadens, um, I believe, the banking industry, the um, how they. Um, how the company works and how the finances flow. It's always interesting because everyone speaks a different language. And you know, the banking industry has theirs. We have ours. Every in the business industry has theirs. It's always interesting and and you're always open to learn, especially when you're being brought in as a board member or or even like Leandro, you know, that he goes to the hospital again, that's another world in itself. So it's always I, I really like the idea that that we have the diversity in our in our um, in our committee meeting, and uh, I went ahead and uh, presented the treasurer's report. And again, I I made copy. Uh, again, you have the the copies, but um, I don't. Um, the first one that I usually do is the cash analysis, and again, it's uh, it's just a one-page snapshot. Of, um, of the big reporting that we do, and uh, uh, that is the GRT. Can you go to the um, cash analysis? There you go, that blue one, that next one. That one right there. And um, um, again, we, I, I include the, the, the budgets and any budget adjustments that, that uh, will, will have happened, and there was none at the first quarter in the adjusted budget. But then I indicate the, the three scenarios as far as the cash flows and to show exactly how the report reads in the first column, the blue column, and that is the revenues at $958,961 against the expenditures of $2,726,194 that were transfers out of 
$358,031.05, which leaves a negative $2,125,264. And um, again, this is just like a trial balance type of um, reporting that, that just shows um, how the money uh, flowed in. And I'm giving you the cash balance again in, um, at um, the end of the quarter, which was the general fund balance of uh, $4,208,515. And again, I've listed all the other cash balances. But overall, if you take the $3,668,000 at the very end, and um, it, um, and even though we have a, a negative two million in the in the general fund at this time, it's basically because of the the way the the cash flows in 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 the county government, which will in the next one, which is the detail of receipts for the uh, property taxes. Um, do you want to go ahead and scroll to that one, please? Now you'll see that we have not. The first quarter we didn't receive any property taxes. At all, so that is lends itself to the negative um, monies that um, would have offset the the general fund monies at that time. But again, we don't receive them until the second quarter, and we receive monies in the prior year and of um, three hundred and ten thousand and property interest and penalties seventy seven thousand. We did very very well with the um, with the auction. And uh, the, the state uh, picked very few properties that uh, brought any significant uh, revenues in. So we, we're hoping for the best that we can as we work hard in the treasurer's office to, to bring in the, those delinquent monies, uh, that revenue. And we're hoping that we can meet that budget of 827000 And then the interest and penalties, if we can keep that 300000 that would be good. So um, again, we're we're striving to to be able to uh, maintain the uh, uh, what we said the goals act and the goals are again the budget. Uh, the next page, which is the graph, again you will see where we're at in um, in the um, in the in the charts, and again that basically you can see it very well. Um, where the where the money comes in, but um, um, it's um, it's color coded. But because of the way the other uh, the other lines show, it's it's indicated on there. But you'll see it next quarter when it when it goes when it goes up and the money comes in in um, in December and January. But the monies if, um, are recorded, if you look at the next page, uh, you will see that um, in September, uh, I have recorded July's cash balance, August cash balance, and September cash balance. And there you, you, you see the general fund as the $4,208,515.31. But if you look down the difference from last year to this year is the low, is the negative 609000 compared to where we were last year. In the um, in the cash balance, but then we have the reserves of three twelve, which is uh, higher than what it was last year, and um, we have a remaining balance after the reserves of one million two hundred and fifteen thousand. And then we I'm showing the investments, which is again we maintained at three million two hundred fifty thousand, and we're showing the additional investment over the reserves of two hundred fifty seven thousand. That's what we have invested over the reserves. The one fourth is the would be the nine hundred and ninety seven thousand five hundred and eighty one if we maintain that, and the excess <coughs> is two hundred and eighteen thousand in excess of the four of the four twelves. The next uh, um, report that I have is the detail of the GRT, which was the first one that um, that you showed the the GRT the first yes. One. Yes, the first slide. Okay, that one. And again, if, uh, if you look at the far side, it's at um, the budget year to date percentage would be 25%. And if you look down, we have basically uh, a little over the 25% in collections. But if you want to look at the, the, the detail, 
at your leisure. It's, uh, it's there the same for the quarter that you're to date. And we we'll hope, we'll hope to meet all the, the budgeted uh, GRTs in that report. Because the, uh, the grand total is um, the 7.3125, and that's the, your, your distribution. And um, so the next um, report is the investment report. And, and again, we have um, in the year to date interest that we have uh, gained on the $3,250,000 um, investment for the first quarter, it was $19,000. And how come, um, I don't remember Citibank being, I thought they were all like 2.5. And I was seeing the city bank as well, we did. We extended that way um, out to a five year. We were going out five years, so it's going to be, it's going to increase from the 2.75. It, it will increase and um, uh, up to the, it has a possibility to go up to the 4.65%. Okay. So, um, and, um, so like I said, we're looking at all of that very closely. But again, this is our reserve, so it, it we're trying to kind of go a little maybe further if need be. So again, we're we're, we're looking at all of that as an investment um, committee. So we're um, we're all we would all be on the same page. The next page again is the um, is the fund, the indigent fund. And uh, again, they gained at seven um, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. They gained seven thousand nine hundred and sixty-three dollars. And then we're we're going out on in an eighteen month on that way. And uh, uh, when it went from the um, to the two point five, when it goes off, to, it goes to the two, to the two point five percent. And the same for the uh, well, the indigent and the uh, USDA both. The uh, indigent went to 2.70, so we're gaining again. The oh, excuse me, the indigent was 9,552, and the USDA was 7,963. Um, I'm used to it being reversed, but uh, that is the investment report. And uh, like I said, we're very pleased that uh, that uh, we can have. Um, we can get together with the finance and the manager's office, and, and again, we always have a very interesting dialogue. And we talk, we discuss the liquidity of the of the uh, general fund, and and maybe even the different funds. And it's a good um, learning experience for all of us as we share what it is that's on our on our minds as uh, as we watch the finances for the for the county. Any questions, commissioners? All right. And you are you seeking a motion to accept this, or it's just a well, just it, just to accept it because again, it's um, required by the investment um, okay. um, policy that it be accepted by the board of the by the board of finance. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner O'Donnell. Yes. Commissioner Blakenhart. Yes. Chairman Pepper. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Item 13, a new business to be considered at a future commission meeting with commissioners. <coughs> Item B, commissioners announcements at 1 o'clock today, there will be a PERA solvency meeting from 1 to 2.30. If anybody wants to hear about the woes of the state plan versus the municipal plan, we'll be talking about that and the cost of living adjustments for retirees. And Numerous things like that. So what, that's, what I want to know is, the, are we going to get cut in our care of retirement? Uh, that's part of what they're discussing this afternoon. Um, I think it's vital for us to be involved in those conversations because uh, the numbers are what they are. The cola is breaking the plan, and it needs to. There needs to be options, and we need to talk about how to protect the solvency of the plan and um, I think that it is important to put everything out on the table so I hope to be able to speak to the board this afternoon on behalf of our employees and what any more increases to our take home will do to affect us. Um, COLA is important and the retirees that have earned it deserve what um, they've earned but on the other side of things uh, there's no way to just invest your way out of the problem. There's going to have to be considerations made by Everybody in the pool, I believe, to save the pool. So it is interesting. Um, 
conversation, and that's the point of the board going around the state trying to hear from the members throughout the state as to what um, options they might bring to the table, and just to understand the numbers, the numbers are what they are. Um, as the chairman mentioned, our union plans are a little better off than the state plans, which is a good thing, so we would definitely hope that we're the last ones they touch. But uh, there's also discussion about asking the state to maybe contribute some money out of that surplus to help shore up a little bit of their... How big is the, the permanent fund? Don't yeah. let me start. Yeah. There we go. But it is, um, it, it's all um, actuary numbers as well, and, and it's just important that we as a pool, because that's what we are, we're all in it together, that we all work together to try and come up with a solution. So maybe we're between one and two three <coughs> this afternoon. Okay, hey, item 14, Towns County Board of Commissioners may convene in closed session uh, to discuss and consider regarding right of way easements on Equity Supercondo. This matter may be discussed in executive session under the Open Meetings Act Exemption 10 15 1 H 8, which allows for discussion of the purchase, acquisition, or disposal of real property or water rights by the public body. Mr. Audio, is it your recommendation that we go into closed session at this time? It is, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, motion to go into executive session as so stated by the chairman. Second. Court call roll. Mr. Yes. Mr. McKinnon. Yes. Mr. McKinnon. Yes. Thank you. 